And I associate just being out with Jordan with that. I'm extremely aware of my surroundings at all times. And so I want to be clear about that because I do feel like there's a misconception about me and who I am and I get it, social media, whatever. But that's not who I am, that's a job. That's how I eat. And I'm never out here in these streets unless there's a check calling at the end of the night. So Jordan proceeds to curse Salas out. And she lets him know, do not get her job, work Jordan, and party Jordan mixed up. Because she would never put his wife in a dangerous position. She would never put her somewhere her life could be at risk. So don't come for her, Salas, because she's not playing with you. So they all proceed to go home and get ready for bed. The Coopers get it in as usual, like every single night. Um, the next day, you know what? Everybody's um. Jasmine wakes up. She makes Alice's breakfast. He's working as usual. Um, she explained to us about how they met. They met online, and they found bonded quickly, and they ended up. You know what? Within six months' time, getting married. Um, they met via when it was the pandemic. And she wakes up. She cooks for him every day. She's a librarian wife now. It's way different from the lifestyle she used to live. And gives us the little rundown. She proceeds to, you know, fix the bed and everything. And tells Salas that two new guests are coming. So Shanice is supposed to be coming. And Phil is supposed to be coming. A mayor decides, okay, he keep trying to get at Jordan. Let me, you know what, plan something romantic for her. And a mere romantic gesture to woo Jordan is to take her kayaking. And Jordan does not look like a girl who wants to go kayaking or does sports. So he proceeds to go upstairs and ask her to go kayaking. And she's like... Am I going to get my hair wet? Am I going to get wet? And he's like, I'm going to try to not let you get wet. So they go, go kayaking. And Jordan is terrified. She's getting wet. She's like, this is not the beach. She doesn't like the look of the water or anything. So she's like, you know what? I'm ready to go back in. I want to go take a shot. I'm ready to go. Let's go. He turns the boat around. They go in the house. They proceed to take a shot and everybody get ready to go bowling. Bria takes a dog in this little backpack. And I'm like, is that dog okay? But I think that backpack was like made for the dogs. I, I never saw that backpack before. It's pretty cute. So they go bowling. Bria's pretty good at bowling. They're all having fun. They see Barack Obama's bowling shoes. And um, Bria goes to the bar with Preston. And she asks... Preston and Jasmine and she's talking to Jasmine she's telling him about Simon and how Simon wants to come visit and she's hoping it's okay that he comes the last week that they're going to be in the vineyard so that she he could spend time with her because he's coming from far and it would be ridiculous for him to come and travel all the way out there for three days mind you Salas is right next to Jasmine and they all agree that that would be fine so they finish bowling. They go ahead and they're, they're eating right now. And Mariah says to them, look, I planned something special for everybody. I want y'all to be a part of this moon mass ceremony. It's a tradition in her family. And you know what? It seemed like it was very important to her. So she's like, after we leave here, everybody could go slide into your pajamas, get ready. <clears throat> And come on, we're going to do a little moon mass ceremony outside. So I think it was Nick. He took care of the tab. They all got in their Uber and they went home. They got ready for Mariah's moon mass. Bria made the fire. Um, I think some of them made drinks. They slipped into their pajamas. Ready for the moon mass. Uh... Jasmine, she was making a couple drinks for everybody, and 
she was taking a bit long and they was waiting on her and Salas decides to go and check on her. Meanwhile, Nick and Jordan is laughing because Nick is like, okay, can she go down the hallway without this man saying, babe, looking for her, checking on her? And he's like, she didn't go to another country. She just went down the hallway. Why? Every five minutes, he's checking on her. Mind you, all of them already think Salas is extremely controlling. So everything he does is going to seem like he's controlling. So they get back and Mariah proceeds with the moon mass ceremony. So she speaks, she, she gives everybody a crystal first. She gives them a crystal and then she sages. She does a little bit of the sound therapy. I think that's what it's called with the, the, when she's making a sound to relax everybody, to calm everybody down. And she asks everybody, so what are your thoughts right now? Does anybody feel like they want to say something about themselves? I'd like to go inside. Yeah. I think mentally we're there. I, think so. I actually don't do this often for groups of people. However, the moon mass was a way for me to connect with everyone. So I guess she wanted everybody to go in a circle and tell them their thoughts or how they're feeling or are they distressed or whatever. I don't know. Because she never got to finish and complete the ceremony. So as soon as she says that, um, I think it was Jordan. She was like, you know what? I'm pretty tired and I'm pretty cold. I feel like I just want to go upstairs. And everybody just gets up. And proceed to leave. Jasmine was like, "Yeah, you know what? I think we got the grasp of it. What are you? What you're trying to do? And I think you know what? We should we should head upstairs now." So Mariah's pissed and she's hurt, and she explained to them that this was important to her. And everybody just got up and left, and completely ignored you know her little contribution to the group, her way of opening up to everybody. They completely ignored it, and she felt hurt, disrespected, you name it. So Mariah's not showing any emotion. She's not saying anything. She didn't tell anybody that she's still mad. She just proceeds on with her day as usual. Um, Silas is up early as usual every morning on the computer doing work. And the guys is up. Shanice comes in. So Shanice arrives, she, she says hi to everybody, and Nick proceeds to say that mm, she doesn't look like her Instagram photos. And, I mean, she probably had filters, she had on makeup, she had her hair done. She's not going to look the same exact way she looks like. She, she just got off a plane in Uber, she decided to not have on no makeup and just come as is. Yeah, like, Nick, she's not going to look exactly like her Instagram photos. Um, she sees Alex. She's immediately attracted to Alex. And she decides to take shots. Hart and Bria get ready to go to the pool, I guess, or the jacuzzi. And everybody's going to get ready to go out to dinner and go to go out to dance. So, fast forward. Everybody's getting ready. <clears throat> to go to dinner and you know Mariah says she's gonna hang back Preston's gonna hang back because he has to work and Mariah says she's gonna hang back because she's still mad about the situation that happened so Mariah goes into the laundry room to get her laundry and she sees that the dog stuff is mixed up with her clean towels and she's pissed so not only that she's harboring her anger from everybody being just so nonchalant and just brushing off her little ceremony now she's mixing the dog stuff with her clothes which i thought was gross like now i did see the episode after episode three and okay i understand that it was not bria's fault but I would have been pissed too. The dog laundry 
and my clean clothes, you don't mix those two. And she's and Mariah had already said to her, she's not like a dog person. She doesn't want dog hair everywhere. She doesn't want dog hair. Even though the laundry is clean, it's still dog fur, dog hair. It's still an animal. It's still something that she doesn't want mixed with her clothes. So, you know what? I think it would have been solved easier if Bria didn't respond the way that she responded. I was in there, which are mine, but your dog stuff is mixed I put the there. pool towels and then this. This is fine. This is clean. I look good. I look good. You're acting like you piss and shit. I don't care. Okay, well, that's, that's your personal problem. So give it to me. Give it to me. It's your personal problem. If Bria would have just said, oh, my laundry, I accidentally, maybe somehow, I don't even know how it got mixed up into your towels, my bad. It should have been, it would have been squashed. But Bria's like, oh, well, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Yeah, Mariah got pissed and then Mariah pushed her and it was this whole big argument going on between them that Jasmine had to separate them. But I think it was because of the way Mariah responded to the way Bria responded to Mariah about her animals' clothes being in Mariah's stuff. I think the way that's the only reason that Bria re Mariah reacted that way. Other than that, I don't think she would have reacted that way. Shanice is just like, look, I don't want no parts of this argument. I just got here like 30 minutes ago. I don't even know what's going on. Why y'all arguing? I don't want no parts of it. She goes to get a drink and then she leaves out the back with a mare. And she hops in the first car and goes to the restaurant. Jasmine goes to talk to Mariah and ask her to calm down. And told her that, you know, she was provoking the argument because she did kept calling Bria a bitch. Bitch, bitch, bitch. And she kept saying it. And then Bria throws um a pretzel at her. And Jasmine's just like, you know what? Calm down. You, you're you wrong in that situation to keep calling her a bitch. Just, you know what? Let's just squash it. Mariah think that Jasmine is taking Bria's side. Bria calms down. They go to get in the second Uber. And notice Shanice is not there. So... Bria gets to the restaurant and she's pissed at Shanice. She's like, I don't even want to talk to you right now because you So it was going down and you did nothing. And Shanice is just like, girl, I have no idea what is going on. I just got here. And I understand where Shanice is coming from. She's like, I just got here. I just got here about 10 minutes ago. So why am I involved in you being mad and you getting into a tussle with somebody that you've been in a house with for four days now. But then I do see Bria's side. She was just wanting Shanice there for support. So she's like, oh, I'm about to leave. Amar Amir goes, chases her down, tell her don't leave. Um, Jordan had to explain to Shanice why Bria's mad. And I'm like, I thought they were best friends. Like, shouldn't Bria know? Shouldn't Shanice know why Bri is mad? Why does Jordan have to explain to Shanice why Bri is mad? You're so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. So Bria, I think Bria was drunk. Because as soon as Bria walked in the door, Bria was already taking shots. So my opinion, I think Bria was drunk. Um, Not Bria. Shanice. I think Shanice was drunk. Shanice was already taking shots as soon as she walked in the door. Shanice was ready to party. And she was already lit before she got ready for dinner. And when she got to dinner, I think she was... Yeah. So, this is what I'm saying. This is why Jordan was looked aggravated. But Jordan was like, look, you could have just stood there as a friend to support her. And talk to her. And comfort her. Like, Shanice is all stumbling all over the place. Shanice was drunk. This is why she ain't know what was going on. And she was just like, y'all not about to kill my buzz. I don't even got time for this right now. Go she just then left. She left Bria. She left the whole fight. She left everything and just got in the car and went to the restaurant. 
It's like, I don't have nothing to do with this. So she was trying to talk to Bria. And a guy's like, oh, don't leave. And went ahead to buy Bria some shots. Shanice tagged along and got herself a drink too. I was like, you know what? <laughs> so they go back to the table. And while they're at dinner, Phil arrives. Phil was drunk too. I'm like... You know what? When I first started watching this show, I thought it was going to be some upper class, bougie, 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 bougie folk. I didn't know I was watching some the bougie loving hip hop because that's what it seems like. I'm watching the bougie loving hip hop. It's no way. They're, <laughs> some of them at home, but this is a vacation house on Martha's Vineyard. This is like a bougie loving hip hop. I kid you not. So Phil is drunk. He walks in the house screaming, who's here, who's here? And Preston's, Preston's like, yeah, I'm here. This is me, Preston, I'm here. And he's like, oh, come and take a shot, come and take a shot. Shot o'clock, shot o'clock. And he, you could clearly see he's drunk. He goes upstairs to give Preston a shot. He hears the dog. He lets the dog out the room, chases the dog all over the house. Then he walks, he thinks the dog is leading him to his room. He walks down. To the room by the pool table, which he did ask Bria for. But then again, it's a first come, first serve. Nobody's gonna leave an empty bed out in a guest house filled with people in an empty bed just sitting there waiting for you for four days. And where are they gonna sleep on the couch? On the floor? Like, come on, be realistic. So he's in he's in the room and he notices Nick's things. And he's like, you know what? What I'm about to do is I'm about to move his stuff. So he goes to Preston and was like, you know what? Somebody took my room. That's supposed to be my room by the pool table. And Preston was like, that's Nick's room. And he's like, oh, don't Nick it up. He was like, so where am I supposed to sleep? Preston, uh, Preston tells him, go ask Mariah because Mariah's in the pool house and she has a lot of space. He could have definitely bunked with Mariah. If, if he was able to stay that long, he could have bumped with Mariah, bunked with Mariah. So he goes to talk to Mariah and he's knocking on the door and Mariah's like, who is it? He's talking about the devil. <laughs> so he gets in there. He's all through Mariah's stuff talking about what you know about spades. And she's like, you, we just met. Why are you in my clothes and everything acting like we cousins or brothers or sisters or something? And I thought, I thought Mariah liked Phil because she was like, when I saw him, I was like, ah, he's tall and I like his energy. And maybe this is the energy we need for the house. And everybody kept saying Phil has the right energy for the house. But Phil didn't even get to stay not a damn near minute to even show the energy to the house. Because if that's the kind of energy he was given. Mm. So they're all getting ready and they're about to go meet up the rest of the gang at the club. Mind you, the rest of them walk into a club where everybody look like not even in the age group, like in their 50s or late, late 40s. I don't know. But it was not the vibe, but they definitely made the best out of it. So <clears throat> Phil, Mariah and Preston is waiting for the Uber and they're waiting and feels like I'll be right back. And they're waiting and waiting and waiting. And Phil went to take a shit in Nick Nick's bathroom because really, so you're gonna go ahead and take a shit in somebody's bathroom and not flush it to be disrespectful. So the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, is this the type of energy that they kept talking about? Phil, 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 energy, Phil, 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 because this is disgusting energy. This is ridiculous energy. Why would you do something like that? So they're like, you know what? We leave in you. He got out the house in time to not miss the Uber. They get to the bar with everybody. Bria's pissed because Bria's like, Mariah just put her hands on me earlier. Everybody's acting like she did not just put her hands on me. Everybody's cool with her doing that. And now she's partying, having a good time, taking pictures with everybody. Like... What am I, chopped liver? So, Preston goes 
to tell Nick, look, I think he touched your stuff. He kept talking about moving your stuff out of the room. And Nick looks pissed. And Phil proceeds to tell Nick, hey, that was supposed to be my room because Bria was supposed to put a sticky note on the on the room. And he's like, nobody put no sticky note. Even if Bria did put a sticky note, it's supposed to be an empty bedroom for four days until you get there. When it's a house filled with people, that doesn't make any sense. So, Nick is just pissed. And Nick is just like, I don't know where this guy came from with his oversized sweatsuit looking like he coming from 1994. I don't know who you think he is. Mind you, Jordan and Jasmine is outside having a conversation where Jordan is shoving the shit out of Jasmine because Bree is mad. And everybody decides to ignore the fact that Mariah put her hands on Bria. All right. It was a hot mess at the club. So, you know what? They like, you know what? Let's just go. They get home. Nick goes to the bathroom. And Phil did tell him he took a shit in the bathroom. But what Phil didn't tell him is that he ain't flushing. So when he gets home to the bathroom and he sees it and he's like, this nigga took a shit in the bathroom and he didn't flush it. He goes to approach Phil to ask him, Phil, this is not cool. This is disrespectful. This, it's not only disrespectful, it's disgusting. Can you go flush the toilet? You could be a bigger man and go flush the toilet. Nobody left no sticky note on no bed. And no bed in a house full of people is going to be empty for four days until you come. Like, that's ridiculous. So somebody's supposed to be bunking with somebody and it's a perfectly fine bedroom right there? Like, I'm pretty sure if he would have spoke to Nick, Nick would have probably made some accommodations for him. Like, they would have found a place for Phil to sleep. He did not have to go shit in that man bathroom and leave it floating in there. And then go to the club after. Oh, you nasty ass bastard! You fucking nasty ass motherfucker! That's nasty, man! Shitty Phil. That's his name, Shitty Phil. So, he asked Phil kindly, and Phil did not want to go flush it. Nick was like, you know what? I'm going to be the bigger man, and I'm going to go flush it. And then Phil proceeds to say, because Phil is drunk as shit. Phil was drunk by the time he came out the Uber, dropping everything. He couldn't even bring his suitcase in the house. Phil was drinking while they was getting ready to go to the bar. Phil was drinking at the bar, and Phil looked like he was still drinking when he got home. So, Phil is drunk, and he's like, oh, yeah, I know you're going to go flush it. You're going to go flush it. So, Alex proceeds to talk to him. It was like, yo, this, why do you... What's wrong with you? What's going on? Why would you think that shit is okay? And he starts screaming at Alex. You walking away. You gonna flush that toilet. I think you wanna be a comedian, right? Want to be? Yeah. I don't know the f you are, but understand. I called some shit out and I told everybody not to touch my s. I caught out. Yeah, I did miss my flight, but f that. I don't know the f you think no, I'm hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But you that was not supposed to happen. But you sound like this is your why are you coming at us like this is your house? This is our shit. And telling Alex, you don't you don't know who I am and all of this crazy shit. And then Amir is just like, oh, hold up. Amir was about to whoop Phil ass real quick. Amir is just like, sir, <laughs> calm it down. So Amir is like, look, you being disrespectful to everybody. You talking about Preston's shirt. You took a shit in Nick's bathroom and then flush it. Now you coming for Alex? Nah, that that's it. That's enough. Like, you need to just shut the fuck up. This is our house. You don't just come in this house and think you're going to run shit. So Amir, he's like, oh, sit your little ass down. Amir was like, yo, step over here and I'm going to show you what this little ass could do to you. Phil was like. He ain't want no problems. Phil ain't want no problems. Because Phil was acting like he was going to step over there. But he really wasn't going to step nowhere. He re he was not really about to go step nowhere. Amir was like, he's he's the, he's not playing with Phil. Phil got to go. Preston said Phil got to go. Everybody was like, Phil has to go. Because this is ridiculous. Amir was like, he's not there for it. For Phil and his bullying energy. And he need to leave. So the girls is hearing the commotion 
And Jordan comes down to talk to Phil because she's like, you know what? I spoke to him on the phone. He seemed like such a nice person. I don't know what's going on. What happened between the time we left the club and here? And she's trying to speak to Phil. And it's just like talking to a child because Phil is drunk. Phil is drunk as shit. So she's talking to him and she's just like, so what day were you supposed to come? And he was like, oh, never mind what day I'm supposed to come. I came when I came. And she's like, I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Shanice comes in and he's just like, oh, she's my favorite. Before Shanice comes in, he's just putting money on the table talking about, oh, the dog had me running all around the room. I bet you $100 you can't go catch this dog. And Jordan's like, what? Shanice comes. Jasmine comes. And everybody's there. And Jasmine's like, look, we're about to have, she says, ladies, we're about to have a family meeting, a group meeting. And Phil is like, and gentlemen. And Jordan's like, are you? Are you a gentleman? Because the way you're acting right now, you're acting like a a, a couch man or a, a nigga on a seat. It's something she said to him. And he's like, what? I already said, I was trying to be nice to you. Um, I called you cute. And Jordan's like, oh, wow. I'm supposed to, what am I supposed to do with that? What am I supposed to do with this information? You call me cute. So Phil's like, you doing all of this because I took a shit in Nick's bathroom? I'll take a shit in your bathroom next. Bitch, I hope the fuck you do. You'll be a dead son of a bitch, I tell you that. So that pissed the fuck out of Jordan. And Jordan went off on Phil. She cursed him the fuck out. She was not playing with him. They go to the group meeting. And um, guess what? Phil got to go. Get on out of here. So they told Bria, you invited him. You got to send him packing. So Bria was like, okay. So now I want to leave too because everybody's making a ruckus of what Phil did, right? But what about Mariah? She put her hands on me. So nothing's supposed to happen to her for that. I want Mariah gone. And everybody's like, we don't want Mariah to go. But Jasmine had to make the hard decision of Mariah leaving. Bria, she goes, speaks to Phil, and she told Phil, you got to leave. Then we see Jasmine go talk to Mariah and tell Mariah, you know what, you got to leave. The next day, Mariah's getting ready to leave. Um, I think it was Amir who goes on check on her and gives her a hug. Jasmine also goes and check on her and gives her a hug, and she gets ready to go. Um, Amir is running around the house doing things things he was fixing the curtains he's he's just doing everything around the house and jasmine was like you notice amir's always doing something he's always doing something around the house and amir says yeah like putting accidentally putting mariah's laundry in with the dog's laundry and everybody was like so basically bria was not to blame for the dog stuff being accidentally put into Mariah's stuff. And it was all a mare. So <laughs> the whole fight wouldn't have happened if a mare would have left people clothes alone. Stop touching people clothes. Let them do their own laundry. He admits that everybody's getting ready for field day. And um, they was all drinking and a little excited. And... I think Shanice tried to touch Alex because she did say she was attracted to him and she liked him. So it seemed like she tried, she she played with him a little bit too much. She was in his personal space at dinner and he was like, Shanice, keep your hands to yourself. You got a little touchy, chesty hand problem. So she was just like, what does that mean? And she doesn't say anything to him. And everybody's just looking like, hmm? Why? Why would he say that? Mind you, Alex ain't even tell her the reason why. Why would you tell her something like that and just not say the reason why? Matter of fact, why wouldn't you just ask her what you heard about her? That would have been better. Y'all all in the vineyard together, y'all all are trying to be friends with each other. 
and getting to know each other, you heard something about her, just ask her. Instead of just reading the, the article you heard and just believing it. Just ask her what really happens because it's always three sides to the story. So he tends to distance himself from Shanice because he read an article. So they go to field day. We have Jordan as a captain and we have Nick as a captain. They play their little games and it came down to the two captains to decide who won. We clearly know Nick's team won. But since Nick is in love with Jordan and wants to play it off like he's not in love with her. Come on, you're in love with her. Let's stop playing games. Play it off like he's not in love with her. He says, oh, it's a tie. So after field day, Jordan and Amir goes to take a little walk on the beach. And Bria convinces Shanice to talk to Alex about the statement he made earlier. So Shanice goes to talk to Alex and she basically babbles and babbles and babbles about, oh, if you don't want me to touch you, I won't touch you. And, oh, I didn't know it was a problem to touch you if I touched you. And you wasn't comfortable. I don't want to be in your space. She basically babbled and babbled and babbled. And that this morning. And I was like, first of all, space. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, okay, right, I don't want to talk to him anymore. I'm literally not going to talk to you. I'm not going to say a word to you. And they're like, back off. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> like, because I'm trying to respect you. Got it. I can tell that. And she didn't really get to the point. Like, why did you, was I, all she had to do is ask this man two questions. Was I too touchy and invading your space at dinner? And do you not want me to touch you anymore? That's it. That's the only two questions she had to ask him. All what she said to him was just nonsense. And he was just looking at her like, okay. If you felt like I invaded your space, thank you for letting me know that. Now, I won't invade your space no more. I won't touch you. She didn't even have to explain that to him. She just did not have to touch him, period. And move on. All he had to do was ask her about it. Hey, I read an article about you. Is it true? That's all he had to do was ask her about it. How would you know if you don't ask her? So you're just going to assume and now all of a sudden it's just like, oh, you're being a little touchy because she, I heard she crazy. So now I want her touching me. Shanice, respect people's space. He don't want you touching him. Don't touch him. Don't. I wouldn't even talk to him after that. We wouldn't have even been friends. So they get back to the house and Preston and Jordan and Amir is cooking dinner. Amir says that he loves cooking. <clears throat> cooking is one of his passions. His mother sent him to cooking school and this is why he's good at cooking. Um, You know, him and Jordan is flirting as usual, always. She's like, oh, would you mash my potatoes? And he's like, of course. So... They cook and dinner. They call everybody to come down to eat and enjoy the food. Everybody starts making fun of a salad because every five minutes he's calling Jasmine. He's like, babe, babe, babe. And he was about to call her to ask her for a fork, I think it was. And everybody's like, really? Seriously, salads? So they're eating and they're talking and they're talking about going out. And having a girls' night going out, and Salas is like, once y'all don't come back too late, too late, <clears throat> and y'all cannot get no free drinks. Throw an ass in a circle. We are going to the strip club. I mean, free drinks are great. Nah, what? We can get free drinks too. If we get free drinks, what? No free drinks. Tell me she gotta pay for her own drinks. That's it. Seriously, why no free drinks? I'm very confused. No free drinks from you guys. No. Because he feel like free drinks is sending the wrong message to the wrong guy. So, so Jordan, Jasmine, Jordan, and Shanice is like, you must not know the same 
Jasmine before. Do you know she used to work at a club? We all met because we worked at the same club. And Salas is just like, okay, yeah, that was back then. This is now. Like, she don't work at a club no more. She's somebody's wife now. She got to have these certain rules. And I got to see Salas's point of view, okay? They're married now. People at 18 and people at 40 do not do the same things. You might have some tendencies. Yeah, go out once in a while. But partying every night, like when you're 18 and partying every night at a fest 40 is two different things like one is okay and one is just not okay don't look right it's just crazy so what salas is trying to tell them is that basically she's a wife now so she cannot expect to be going out to the club all three four five o'clock in the morning and taking drinks from random men flirting with random men and just being disrespectful in their marriage salas grew up very differently he came from an african household they have different traditions and different ways they want their women to act and jasmine married into that knowing these things so she should know this is what's expected of her she's not supposed to <clears throat> throw away her identity or who she was before him but she had to make adjustments because she decided to marry this man knowing his background and knowing his religion and just knowing his type of family values and what he wants out of his wife. So, Shanice, Jordan, Bria, everybody's mad like, what? What do you mean she can't have a free drink? A free drink? There's nothing wrong with that. And they proceed to say that Salas is very controlling or overly protective. So, Jasmine gets mad and she's just like, you know what? I'm ready to go to bed. Because Jasmine, because Salas also says that when the Jasmine he's with at home 24-7 is not the same Jasmine that is around her friends. And that is so true because people, friends, certain friends bring certain aspects out of you. So when you're hanging out with your friends, you're going to act different because these is your friends. You, you y'all hang out in certain ways so he's now seeing the jazz the club jasmine come out a little bit or trying to come out <clears throat> but he's trying to keep that club jasmine far away so jasmine gets up and she gets ready to go to bed because she's mad and salas goes chasing after her and everybody's just like asking preston did he always act like this and preston is like yes he always act like this. He was always this controlling and possessive. And he's always been like that. And I think it's just two different cultures, two different people. Jasmine was always in the club. Now she's married. She needs to know she can't be in the club all the time. Now, it's no problem for her to go out once in a while, hang loose. She doesn't have to tell her husband she got free drinks. She can say, okay. Her husband says, Sally says, no, don't get no free drinks. Jasmine's like, okay, boo, I'm not going to get no free drinks. Go to the club, have fun, get your free drinks. Like, what? He don't have to know. You don't have to report to him everything. That will stop the confusion. He's thinking she ain't getting no free drinks. She's definitely getting free drinks. No harm, no foul. So, he's calling her babe, 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 following her everywhere around the house. Meanwhile, everybody else is downstairs talking about them. And they turn over to Nick, and they ask Nick, so Nick, what kind of girls do you like? Nick proceeds to say, I like black women, but I do have a girlfriend right now. And Jordan and Shanice is just, like, puzzled. Like, wait a minute. Jordan's like, Nick been in my DM for days trying to get at me. Shanice is like, Nick proposed to me before I got here. This whole time he had a girlfriend? Like, seriously? So. Like I said. 
love and hip hop, the bougie love and hip hop all over. So guys, yeah, that was all for episodes two and three. I'll come back with the rest of the episodes. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy my videos or would like to be notified every time I upload a new video.